Nature is never quite where we see it. It is a becoming as well as a passing, but the becoming is both within and without our power. With that being said, the question for my parents is, when did you become Muslim and why? When did you become Muslim and why? Uh, I became a Muslim when I was about mm, 17 years old. Um, I think I just was searching for something and um, just wasn't content with what I saw around me. Having been in Vietnam, I really had a real dislike. I really came out of there with a real dislike for Caucasians. I thought they were, the, the army I felt was extremely racist, okay? Mm -hmm. And it really left me, uh, I would say, bitter at that time, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the nation of Islam at that time, you know, had a philosophy. This wasn't true Islam. Okay, I need to make that point. Mm -hmm. But but they had a philosophy that where they said like the white man was the devil. Okay, but what that really did, what it really did, was act as a, a catharsis. We were also told that we were to obey the law. Okay, mm -hmm. that we were to go unarmed, that we weren't supposed to carry any weapons or anything like that, and we were to treat everyone with justice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it was like nation building. We need our own businesses. You know, our own stores. It, turned you away from them mm -hmm. okay, as your focus and made you focus on yourself and your own self-worth and your own self-value mm -hmm. okay however you know there was a lot of things in my opinion that were flawed with the nation of islam and so i didn't really remain in the nation of islam very long okay mm -hmm. but i did but i did hold on to the philosophy or at least what they had said was islam mm -hmm. and when i went to college I took classes with um, what, would, what would be considered Orthodox or Sunni Muslims and took classes on what was really El Islam. Mm -hmm. And Elijah Muhammad, who was the leader of the nation of Islam, when he died and his son took over, Warf Dean Muhammad, he took over and brought the community away from the old teachings of his father, you know, black nationalism and um, black supremacy and took it to, you know, um, orthodox Islam. The true religion of Islam, which is based upon peace, okay, mm -hmm. and is based upon um, looking at individuals and, and people for who they are and not just lumping everybody together and saying, well, these people over here are bad, you know what I mean? In regards to their actions, their deeds or whatever, if they're this color, they're bad. Okay, mm -hmm. and if they're not, they're good. Okay, Islam, you know, there's no concepts like that in El Islam. Okay, mm -hmm. so, 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 so that's really how I eventually came to the religion. Knowing all that, growing up, my parents were in an association of Muslim families that we used to do stuff with, like go camping, have Islamic studies and Arabic classes on Sundays, you know, wholesome family stuff. Because I felt I had a community of friends that were Muslim, I never felt like an outcast or anything. In elementary and middle school, where the pressure is on you to be like everybody else, I felt it too. But for the most part, I felt proud of being of a different religion, and I bragged about it. Some little kids would be like, oh my god, you don't celebrate Christmas? You don't get no presents? Um, no, I don't celebrate Christmas, okay? We have our own holidays devoid of pagan rituals. You tell me what decorating a Christmas tree got to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. Halloween, you don't even know what you're celebrating. You just want some candy. But you know, by high school, I had lightened up. For me, Islam was all about pretty scarves, bean pies, and having people mispronounce your name. Plus, it was about sharing stories with your friends about how ignorant some people are. Being Muslim was mostly cultural. Shoes. Shoes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I told you, them, them girls in Florida are bold. Florida? Yeah. They, yes, they are bold. Man, this girl was like, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> she was like, um, what's your background? I was like, I'm black. You know, I'm like, uh, background. I'm African-American, I'm a, you know? Pursuing a degree in English. Oh, I'm like, uh, I'm like, <laughs> and that's why I told her I said I'm black. And she was like, uh-uh. She was like, what, what, what's all this? What, what's all this? She was like, she's like, uh-uh, what, what's all this? What's all this? I said, I'm Muslim. Oh, you Muslim? Ooh. And then she was like, the only, see, I ain't never seen no black girl with, with this one. The only kind of people I saw with that on is the Mexican looking people. No, <gasps> Mexican looking people. Yeah. 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 Her friends also said, yeah, the Arabs, the Arabs. Yeah. Oh. That's so ignorant. First of all, ignorance is so, it's just so big. <laughs> it's horrible. With the name of Allah, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer. I testify that there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. It's his messenger. I don't drink, say no to drugs. Mix a lot, pays a cot, just because. Why? That's what you're supposed to do. If, 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 and, and, y'all, y'all, I'm scared of you. I roll deep with my Muslim click. On the block, we them chicks no dudes can get checked. The Kimar is tight. I rock a skirt with a shirt and some matching nights. I keep a note on just how I'm feeling. Lord knows ain't no love for the Muslim children. That's how it goes post 9-11. So much trouble in the world, I want to fly to heaven. So I get on my knees, pray my five a day. Ask God to forgive and take my sins away. Plus I stay on my guard, keep watch for the haters. What's your book? What's your dean? And what you trying to do by the token of time? and do righteous deeds and join together in a mutual teaching of truth, patience, and constancy. Nowadays, presently, the Muslim community is a lot larger than it was when I was little, and also the thinking has gotten a lot more diverse. One of the side effects is that somebody always got something to say. Some people say, oh, you too lax. Uh, Some other people be like, yo, you too extreme. There's always somebody saying, oh, it's wrong for you to do that. Oh, you can't do that. Muslims are not supposed to do this. So people feel that it's their job to tell you how you should live your life. Man. You know what I'm saying? Our, our Muslim brothers is getting bombed and killed right now. We ain't here singing and dancing like some new school Bojangle Negroes, man. We should be, we ain't here, we ain't got the There's this culture of just passing on this judgmental attitude to, to all Muslims everywhere else, and it's isolating them and it's making them really alienated to other Muslims. I'm like, I wish you would step outside the city. You would see anybody else phone. crazy but y'all. Y'all yeah, the only yeah, one. That's true. Really crazy. Nobody else. Crazy. Oh, a you bunch go of, to DC. Yeah, exactly. Your sisters will embrace you like yeah, like a real sister. One issue that comes up repeatedly is dress and whether or not it's modest enough. I like Aziza because it's a Muslim woman's magazine, but it's so confusing to me to see, uh, you know, one Muslim woman with this and then another Muslim woman with that and then another mm-hmm. Muslim with nothing on her hair and then another Muslim with just a little piece of keem- a little piece of scarf. It's not Kimar. A piece of scarf just draped over her head. And, of course, if you grow up in America, you're going to run into all types of Muslims of different cultures. I choose to, when I wear my scarf, I choose to wear it like this. Some people therefore perceive me as being loose, you know, because I choose not to be, you know, pinned up under my neck. <laughs> so, I would fuck it, thank you. Let me see if she can make it. Oh, I remember. Oh, 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 you're a great. You call a tear neck, is it? You just call a tear neck. Even the pizza. I don't know. 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 I don't know
Muslims. We can't keep having these conversations. A lot of Muslims don't read up on their Islam. <laughs> they've never read. Yep. They've that's never read the itself. passage where it right. says mm -hmm. what women, how women should be covered. And right. that's why you got these girls saying, "You don't gotta be a Kimar. Where did you get that from? Where did you read it? Why would you assume that just because somebody don't wear a Kimar that they haven't read the Quran?" Oh my God! I ain't gonna play high school. Wait, they need to get off. I remember in Philadelphia one time sitting waiting for the bus and the way I used to cover um, I used to wear a scarf that came down and I tied it in the front it wasn't pinned under my neck or anything but I just remember I was in high school standing waiting for the bus and this woman came and she grabbed the two pieces of material by my scarf and said, Sister, you're supposed to be covered from, you know, all the way up in your neck and it's haram for you to be walking out in the street like this. And I can't believe your father let you out the house looking like this. Growing up, I always, whenever I saw women wearing overgarments in the cobs and stuff, I felt guilty. I felt like they were doing something that I wasn't doing. That they were, be like, they, they, not necessarily they were better, but they had mastered that part. Mm -hmm. They had, they were a lot better, doing better with that than me. Not that they were better Muslims, not that they were more pious, not that they knew more than me, but at the, the at the basic that I can say about this sister is that she knows how to cover properly. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't necessarily, I'm not going to stand here and say that I think every woman should wear full face niqab and overgarment because that's not what the Quran and the Sunnah say. If you believe that it's not the Quran and Sunnah for women to wear overgarments and face veils, then why, where the guiltiness come from? From then on, it's like, I can't feel like if I mm -hmm. come around the Muslims and get flack for how I dress, and if I go around the non-Muslims, and if I go around the non-Muslims, no, if I dress like the people, I'm trying to be getting it. No, because if you go from here and you do the non-Muslims, they say, oh, you need you cover so much, blah blah blah. You come with the Muslims, oh, you cover too little. Where's my middle pad? Where's my Muslim? That's why you just hold them up. Going back and forth, at least in Philadelphia, no, mm -hmm. we go everywhere. back and forth. It's everywhere. But I mean, the if reason you, why I'm saying Philadelphia is because that's what I know. I think right. we bicker more than anybody else. But we got 50 different camps going around saying we the best. We know what we talking about. We cool. We got the mm -hmm. knowledge. Y'all don't. Because if you go to some, you know, matches in they Philly, you know what we talking line. about. You come in. She want my husband. You got a red. If, on if you got a red feet. sock on, they gonna look at you dirty. <laughs> you got a hot pink sock on. It's over. Some of these sisters go wild and rambunctious. <laughs> you got on I don't put nobody on mine. They think exactly. I'm crazy. You know, I still go through German pants. I go like this, I'm just saying. And they look at me like. And that's what I'm saying. People okay. make this thing difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Read the text. It's like a jungle sometimes, I got to rumble sometimes It's like my bad self, warming the mind, exploring the slime Trying to get my life right, that's tight Getting control of your soul is a tough fight My only purpose on this earth is to serve My faith in God and my hope is to give me the nerve Give me the strength, try to make sense of the mess Lord knows this life is gonna give me stress But I pray to God that I pass this test Try my best to make all my actions progress And work hard to seek the truth So in the end I reap the fruit, confusion in my mind, trying hard to live true Islam, but I got to find my way, before I get to judgment day. I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't have wisdom, I don't have knowledge. So when, it, when the MSA be like, oh, Nadir, we need you to speak about the angels. I don't know about the angels, so I'm not going to get up there saying I know stuff about stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, real came down. Yeah, that's like, that's like, that's like that's 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 But I noticed, I noticed, even it, you know, in that small clique, small clique at Morgan State University, the Muslims, brothers, I noticed, are far more quick to talk about Islam. It, I guess it's an ego thing. They just, um, they'll speak about stuff that they don't really have a lot of knowledge about. They're mm -hmm. like, yo, so anyway, and, da -da -da, and be Muslim, da -da -da. and I'm far more reserved. I'm not about speaking about something I don't know about. You know, certain ayats and, and, and sunnahs and stuff like that. I can't, I can't even pretend like I know certain things about that. So I just tell you right off the bat, um, no.
I think I'm going to get one of those Sienna's. Either cooperate, yeah, they cooperate the Quran and give an explanation on the Quran. Right? Uh, you know, but the but the answer tends on the Hadith is whether or not it's in accord with what the Quran is saying, right? He was telling that stuff. See, because there are Hadith that, that they use to justify stoning people to death because that's not in the Quran. So you want to start marching. And they try and say that, well, these stone people to death. Yeah, stone people to death. The death society now. That's for the punishment for uh it's not adultery. The Quran. It's not in the Quran. Uh-uh. Being stoned to death? No. It talks about the um flashing well, one hundred lashes. Right. But that's not stoned. That's not stoned to death. Not stoned. Stone 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 yeah. No, the one of lashes is for for fornication. But it also says stone is for adultery, don't it? No, no. You gotta know. Are you sure of that? You're the same thing. I'm absolutely sure. Who is that? Was Uh, no, that's not in the side. Uh, it's not? It's in it's in so twenty four. Twenty four. Right. Twenty four. No, I remember seeing it earlier. It's in 223. I think it's in the set, too. I'm telling you, I've seen it earlier. Yeah. Oh, slashing. Uh, no, I'm telling you, I know it's got to be in the set. No, it is, you know what? And it's one, it, it, it talks about it in, in, in the set, too. Uh, one of the early ones, too, also. Because it talks about what? The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the flogging, uh, no, not flogging, the slashing, the slashing no, no. I'm telling you, dude. No, it it's in one of, if it's not, he says, it's one of the early stories, I'm telling you. I've seen it. It might be 24, but it's also, let me, give it, let me get a Brian. I, I know it, dude, because I, I remember seeing it. Say that he don't even say that in the footnote. Got no stone. Mm -hmm. It is a hoodie. I mean, Greece, let, let me give you some background history on this. Had the same, the same conversation with a professor of mine in 1972. <laughs> That's right. That's right. In deep green of forest, the leaf curls and uncurls, up and up until it swirls in dizzy heights, clinging, swinging, surging up and up, seeking the wide sky, the sun. Drawing, pushing, urging upwards. Moist heat feeding from young seedling to great tree grown. Tender shoot vines, entwines, roots encircling, branch embracing. Up, upwards climbing. Through roof leaves breaking, wild clouds greeting. Enjoy the sun's face meeting. When I was, um... When I was going from eighth grade to ninth grade, I just started looking at relig at Islam, like, okay, is this something that I really believe, or is this just something that I've been doing because my parents have been doing mm. it? And I decided for myself, like, I really went into the Quran and studied the Kimar and why mm -hmm. and the reason behind, you know, wearing mm -hmm. Kimar and that kind of stuff. Something that I never knew before was just put this scarf on before you go out the house. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I know the meaning behind it and it's easier for me to accept it. Mm -hmm. So this is a whole no another set of issues. What is it like to be born in America, mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. as a Muslim? Mm -hmm. Nobody has a blueprint because your parents didn't go through <laughs> right, it. Right, and right. What is it like to be 16 and be Sunni Muslim? Your, a lot of our parents came into the nation of Islam. Like, mm -hmm. my parents came into the nation of Islam mm -hmm. before they came to Sunni Islam. Mm -hmm. So, 
even then, you know what it's like to be 16 in the nation, but do you know what it's like to be 16 and be in the, you know, be Sunni Muslim? Mm -hmm. This is out there, but I think my, my sisters and my brother are still kind of like on that road to, you know, discovering Islam yeah. for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel lucky because I was 14 and I mm -hmm. could discover it. And for them to be um, in their late teens and mid 20s and still kind of like, you know, searching and everything like mm -hmm. that. But I think that's the one plight of um, Muslims who are born into this religion because at some point in your life you have to decide whether you want to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Our parents already did that and that's why they converted, mm -hmm. you know, but with us, you have to discover for yourself and I don't think it's just for Muslims. I think if you're born Christian, any Jewish, religion. any religion, mm -hmm. it's some point in your life where you have to say, is this really for me? It was, it was really in my 20s when I really started slowly getting certain things, certain things to start to, you know, become a obvious to me or apparent to me and I just started just taking it slow and taking it slow and taking it slow. Islam is the most comfortable thing I have ever done, you know, and if anything ever feels uncomfortable, then it's, it's something that's not right about it, you know what I mean? Like, don't get caught up in what other people tell you do because Islam should always feel right, you know, every aspect of it, you know, to how it is that you may choose to cover or not cover, or how it is you may choose to just do whatever, you know, it should always feel comfortable to you. But I think that once you make something your own and understand it and live that way, it becomes easier, you know, okay. to, you know, once you begin to practice those things that you believe, it becomes easier. Has and it's you, not... Do you feel like it has become easier? Um, yes, in many ways. I don't worry, I don't worry about the things I used to worry about in terms of being Muslim and what people think, mm -hmm. um, you know, or even what other Muslims think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've gotten to the point now that I realize that I have to answer for my own um, mistakes. Anybody who, who who adheres to those five pillars, right, and adheres to those fundamental beliefs, which is called Aqidah, they're Muslim, okay? Uh -huh. And that you don't, you know, and, and like the differences in interpretation and uh, the way people interpret things differently, excuse me, that's no justification for putting people outside of Islam or looking excuse me, looking down your nose at them, uh -huh. you know what I mean, or trying to act like you better than them, or that their faith is not as sound as yours. Because it's not based upon, it's not based upon those fringe interpretations, it's based upon, do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in his angels? Do you believe in his books? The most beautiful things for me is prayer and Quran. To your Quran, cling, cling, and cling to your prayer. You, you set goals and stuff for yourself, and you don't know how you're really going to achieve it, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you set goals for the community, you don't really know how you're going to achieve it, but you place your faith in God. Mm -hmm. That God has said that He's going to help you if, if you do what's right, then He's going to help you, okay? Mm -hmm. So you make up your mind you're going to do what's right. Well, you're going to do your best to achieve this goal that's good, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you see how things come together for you, mm -hmm. how things that are totally beyond your control, you know, help you, okay? Mm -hmm. Then that's what strengthens your faith because you see that these are things happening to help you achieve the goal that you set for yourself mm -hmm. that are totally beyond your control. It has to be coming from God. Mm -hmm.